Cat's Corner, take 1,000. <laughs> Welcome back to Cat's Corner. Uh, this is our first official video and I'm super excited to be here and to be doing this with you guys. I will be doing recipes that I've never tackled before. I've been cooking all of my life, but one of the interesting things about cooking is you never really know everything. So my idea is that I will be doing brand new recipes that I've never seen before. Hopefully in the future recipes that you guys send me. But today we are tackling our first recipe, which is perfect for the time of fall. We are going to be doing an easy apple pie, but we're doing it with an interesting twist. We're going to be doing it inside of a cast iron skillet. For me, I have my Nana's cast iron skillet, and she's the one who taught me to cook what I can cook, and most of it was with that skillet. So it's kind of like a piece of home, which is perfect for the fall holidays. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and get your cast iron ready. And you're going to go ahead and set it on the stove. So you do want to have two pounds of Granny Smith apples and two pounds of red apples. Today I chose Macintosh apples. So basically now what you do is you just peel and you cut into small pieces, which I'm going to do off camera. So the recipe I'm following today is in one of the cookbooks that I have. And they call for four pounds of apples. And I realized as I was cutting, that's a lot of apples, especially to be fitting in a one small cast iron skillet. Well, not small, but you know. So as a drag queen tip, what I would suggest doing, as you cut them, go ahead and start putting them into your cast iron skillet just so you can get the right measurements. And that way you're not having too many apples like I did. So once you do that, you wanna go ahead and dump your apples into a mixing bowl for dramatic effect. In this bowl I have one teaspoon of cinnamon. I did a little dash of nutmeg just because I'm extra obviously drag queen. And there's also three-fourths cup of sugar. So you want to dump those right on top of your apples. And you just kind of shake them around, get them coated. So you just want to give them a good shake and you want to have a nice even coating. Um, I did, like I said, I did a little bit extra nutmeg in mine just to be a little bit extra. So you do see like some of these darker pieces, but that's totally fine. It's going to all bake together. All right. So once that's done, you want to set those to the side. So now you want to set your cast iron pan on one of the eyes of your stove. And you do want to do that at a medium heat. If you're basic like me, that's a five on the scale of the thermostat thingy in my bottom. All right, so what we're gonna do is now that our pan is warming, we're gonna take one stick of butter, if you're doing the simple terms. Technically, it's a half a cup, which equals to one stick of butter. So you wanna toss that right into that skillet, and you wanna kinda let that melt. You wanna get a nice, you wanna make sure all of it's melted. You don't want any pieces left in it. So I just kinda broke up my butter a little bit just to kinda help it melt a little bit faster. All right, so our butter is is melting. You do want to make sure that you guys are kind of moving that around as it melts. You don't want it to stick at any point. You do want to get, like I said, a nice even coating. You want everything to be melted. So just make sure that you are keeping that kind of rotated. I just do it every few minutes just because cast iron, the good thing about cast iron is it heats evenly. Um, you know that this is not fully heated yet because I can still grasp the handle. Once it gets fully warm, I will not be able to touch the handle without having a oven mitt so make sure you're being safe and being careful okay so what we're gonna do while we're waiting for our butter to melt in our cast iron skillet i'm gonna be doing these little points throughout the video anytime i'm having to wait for something whether it's the actual pie to bake or better butter to melt in this case i'm going to be answering questions that i had you guys ask on my instagram and my facebook um, those both will be linked down below so if you want to give me a follow bring it on um, but the first question, I have it from two people. One is from my backup camera person, Lily. Hi. She over there. Mm -hmm. And the other is from a drag queen here in North Carolina named Marceline. And basically, the question is, what's the tea? What am I doing? What's the secret project I keep talking about? Well, this YouTube channel is the secret project. 
So this is pretty much the consistency of the butter that you want. You want it to be nice and fully melted. You want it to be fully liquid. You see there's no chunks of butter left in it. And now we can move on to our next step. So for the next step, I'm gonna be doing one perfectly packed cup of light brown sugar. I'm gonna be honest, I just happen to have light brown sugar, but if you happen to have dark brown sugar or any brown sugar in your pantry, it's gonna be fine. They call for light. I don't follow all the rules, it's fine. I'm a drag queen. So we're just gonna, <laughs> holy, there we go. So we're just going to <laughs> drop that right in there and we're gonna kind of break up that brown sugar and you do want to keep it on that medium heat and you want to go ahead and start mixing it in through the butter. So basically we're creating a caramel sauce here. Um, it's not the exact process of making caramel. Maybe I'll do another video. If you guys want to see me do that video, drop it in the comments below because I've actually never made caramel at home. All right, so you want to keep going until this is perfectly dissolved. It's the recipe, it says one to two minutes, but you know, I'm going to play it by ear and kind of really just see what happens. I am going to go ahead and note, I do feel like this is a lot for one recipe. I, I do feel like, like I said, this is definitely a lot more than necessarily is required. So here's my concern. Um, I've never made this recipe and I don't know if this is good enough yet. I mean, it's, the sugar is primarily dissolved, so I think once you get kind of like that consistency, I think you're okay. I will say I'm noticing as I go, there is a little bit of trouble incorporating the butter into the mixture itself. There's a little bit trying to hide on the edges. So I'm just keeping it going. I'm still stirring and making sure everything is flowing as it should. So I'm gonna go ahead, it doesn't, I don't feel really any sugar lumps or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my burner and I'm just gonna kinda of keep going, let it kind of do its thing. I can see whenever I push it back that it's kind of creating like a bubbling. I don't know if you guys can see that right through here, but it does create like a little bit of a bubbling action. So, I'm gonna just kind of keep moving that just to kind of make sure I'm dissolving any sugar that is left and any butter that's along the edges, I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in and get that fully incorporated. From the heat and set it to the side. Like I said, make sure you guys are using a pot holder of some sort. Um, shout out to James, my roommate, for the pot holder he got me for fall as a fall present all right so I'm just gonna kind of set this to the side all right so for those of you who are like me I grew up making my own pie crust so this is a little bit this is a little surreal for me the fact that I can buy a store-bought pie crust um, I didn't know this was a thing uh, apparently this is a thing and I found that out today so I noticed that there were several different brands. I just picked one, the first one I saw. You can use whatever you prefer, but they basically, they come in these rolls and you just roll them out and you place them where they go. So now what we wanna do, I noticed, so I'm a little concerned because this pie crust is trying to break. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press these cracks in, try to make it a little bit more uniform. Uh, I'm sure I could just take a rolling pin to it, but, um, I'm too short to reach my rolling pin, so I'm not gonna do that. All right, so we're gonna bring it over. And it says to just lay this pie crust right on top of our, I'm gonna call it a caramel sauce. Um, I am noticing that mine has officially broken, um, which is fine. I hope, I think, I don't know. Again, I'm gonna say, I feel like the, measurements are a little bit extra because it is kind of dumping 
it's kind of popping up through the edges, but it's also just a caramel syrup. So I don't really foresee it being a problem. It just may be less of a pie form and more of a pie slop. All right, so one of the big things I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be moving, this pan is very hot, so make sure you're careful if you're doing this at home. Um, I am moving our pie crust up the sides, just kind of creating that boat motion like you would any other pie crust. Um, obviously, it is getting warm, so it is trying to move down, but we're gonna keep going. There's a lot of syrup underneath, so we're gonna hope for the best here. I think I'm going to try to move it up a little bit over just because I feel like that might work out better in my favor. This is all trial and error. Like I said, I have not made this recipe and I know this is kind of like, I guess if there was an idiot's guide, this is, this is it. The drag queen guide. All right. So you see, I kind of have it moved up. That's kind of keeping it from going down the sides kind of. All right, so, you want to, so now that that's in there, I'm going to go ahead and pull out an egg. All right, so our bottom layer of our pie crust is officially in the pan, and it is warming up to temperature. So this recipe wants you to have egg whites. So I luckily, I have this nifty little egg separator. Yep, yeah, see, I'm failing. I have this nifty little egg separator. I'm not a professional. Mess has happened. Welcome to my kitchen. And this little guy, basically all he does is he dumps out the egg whites, but he keeps the yolk in. Nifty little gadget that I got from my aunt. So you wanna keep your egg whites on the side and you wanna have them ready. Um, now what you wanna do is you wanna take your apples from before and you're gonna go ahead and dump them into your pie crust. So I am going to carefully place mine I'm using my hands. I know this isn't technical, the technical way of cooking, but welcome to my kitchen. All right, so I've taken our apples. Apples are, they do, they will cook down. So do not be alarmed if you did kind of go a little overboard. Like I said, this is the good thing about pre-measuring um, and doing it so that you already know they fit into your skillet pan because obviously everyone's skillet pan is a little bit different and there are so many different sizes. So basically here we are. We have our apples in here. We have the bottom layer of the pie crust. And so now we are going to take the other pre-made pie crust. Hopefully this one doesn't break. Oh, it broke. Okay, so this is the downside, I guess, to buying a pre-made pie crust. Um, they will break. So that's fun. All right, so now we're just going to lay the pie crust over. The good thing about the pan still being a little warm is I can easily just kind of push the crust around and I'm going to kind of pinch just to create a little bit of a locking mechanism. Locking mechanism? Sure. Just to kind of secure those edges a little bit. You can already see it starting to melt, which is not necessarily a bad thing in this case. All right, so this recipe, what it calls for is for us to kind of brush over the pie crust with egg whites. However, I don't have a fancy brush. So what I'm gonna do I don't have a fancy brush, but I do have a spatula. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the spatula and I'm gonna just kind of dip it into those eggs. And I'm just gonna kind of start rubbing it across the top. This is just going to kind of help get you that nice golden color that you <laughs> um, well, I'm keeping that in. So you just want to kind of spread that um, egg white across the top. This is probably why you're supposed to have a brush, but I don't. So I just never got it all over my countertop. It's fine. Welcome to my kitchen. You're welcome. All right. So you see I have a nice even coating. I think it's even. All right, so you can see I have a nice even coating of egg on my counter and my pie. Like this one in your case. All right, so now that I have that even coating, like I said, once again, both on my counter and on top of my pie, you want to take a little bit of sugar 
And you just want to kind of sprinkle that across just because that sugar is going to kind of cook and do like a caramelized look to it. I'm assuming, I'm guessing, I don't know. That's enough. Sure. Yeah. This, just to clarify, this recipe said two tablespoons of sugar is supposed to go on top of one pie crust. I'm not doing that much. This is a lot. You can literally see little sugar mountains forming and this is not candy land. This is a pie. So now we have one last little step. So with any kind of pie, you do want to break that open a little bit. You want to give it a little bit of a ventilation. You can see instantly how it kind of went ahead and went down a little. So I'm just going to do a couple little ventilation points throughout it. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and take my oven mitt and I'm going to grab the edge of this and we are going to go ahead and put it right into my oven. Oh, this is really heavy. James! Can you help? Don't touch it, it's hot. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Alright, so this is the part where we relax. Um, our pie is in the oven. It's cooking on 350 degrees. I've cleaned up as I made. Don't judge me. Remember when I said I'm not a professional? Clearly. So our next question is from someone who decided to ask me if I was doing a drag pageant and that's why I had a secret surprise that I couldn't talk about. No. No, I'm not. At all. Probably ever. Our last question is a two-part question and it's from Kristen uh, and she said what inspired you to do drag and what keeps you motivated? So what inspired me to do drag is that I was once the kid that kind of hung out in the back. You never heard me talk. I didn't have the confidence or really know who I was enough to speak out and say like this is who I am. Uh, so I watched a drag show and I saw the confidence that they were radiating and I wanted that and I wanted to be able to do that. So I talked to a drag queen and she put me in drag four days later and I did a talent show and then now here we are seven years later. Uh, the second question, part of the question is what keeps you motivated? I enjoy what I do. But yeah, I mean realistically it's just having something that you enjoy and, the, and you'll stay motivated in it, period. Uh, for me, like I said, cooking. So cooking is my relaxing safe space and combining that with drag, which is something else I love, this is the perfect platform. Things simple, things simple. All right, guys, so you hear the beeping. That means that our pie is officially been in the oven for an hour. So we're gonna turn off that timer. And we're gonna have my wonderful, amazing James come help me get this out of the oven. All right, so we're gonna have this stone top um, hot pan rester thing that my aunt made. So we're gonna use that. Oh, that's good. Well, James is getting it out because synthetic hair will catch on fire. Yay, look at it, look how pretty. Look, I made it. I did it. You ready to eat some? Yes. I did it! I made apple pie in a cast iron skillet. Don't touch because it's hot. Oh, there's Jax. Jax, you want some apple pie? Jax wants apple pie. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it five minutes to cool, and then I'm going to cut into it. It's so pretty. I'm really proud of it. All right, guys. So I've waited five minutes. To let this cool a little bit and now we are going to be switching over to the lily cam so that you guys can see what it's like when i cut into it it smells so good i'm so excited make sure you guys are being safe make sure you're using your pot holders i still have my skull one that james got me so here we go Oh gosh. All right, 
But so I did cut into it and I did cut the first piece and I will say there is a lot of juice in here. That could be because it's not fully cooled yet, but I also I have a feeling that it's because there was that extra in the bottom. Remember I said, I, I mean, I followed the recipe, but remember I was saying I felt like there was too much of that caramel sauce in the bottom. So I think that could be a big reason as to why. So James is going to join me. We're going to call it the James test and we're going to do this probably every week. Oh, you want a stool? Would you like a stool to sit on? Sure. <laughs> Alright, so we are gonna try this apple pie in a skillet that I made and we're gonna hope it's really good. It's really hot. Oh. Maybe I should have waited 10 minutes for it to cool. Also, can we talk about how this is gonna be a tragic accident? This is probably like the next Titanic. We try to eat this while I The James tip of the week is to make sure you give it extra cooling time. You give it more than five minutes. You heard me here first. I, you <laughs> stop talking. That's actually really good. No, it tastes really good. So, my notes on adapting this recipe. Use less apples. Make sure you're measuring them inside the pan so that you have the right amount, which they did cook down a lot. Now that I think about it, I probably could have actually done, probably done multiple times. Actually count those. So if you want to do it the way I did it, I used less. I measured up to, that's really warm. I measured up right to the line with the apples, but they did cook down. So there isn't quite as many apples as I'm sure there would be. So maybe go ahead and do it. Just know that your pie is going to be a little bit more <laughs> but this is why I love cooking. This moment right here, the fact that we're laughing and enjoying a really, really warm, really good apple pie. Like this is what cooking is about for me. This is what I enjoy. And that's why I wanted to make this YouTube channel in the first place. And this is why I want to bring this to you guys. So welcome to Kat's Kitchen. <laughs> Are there any other James notes? What would you change? Is there anything that you like or dislike? I've never asked you about this. Like, I've never asked you that. I like it. It's good. Um, I feel like it's sweet, so it doesn't need anything like ice cream to go with it, but it's good. Yay! So you heard it from the James notes. What do you think? It's actually really good, and I don't like apple pie, so that was a lot. You don't like apple pie, and you like it? Congratulations. And Are you serious? My stepfather can attest to it. Number one, it. who doesn't like apple pie? Number two, you don't like apple pie and you like it? Yeah. <laughs> I done did that. <laughs> this has been Cat's Kitchen. I don't, I don't even need to say nothing else. Tune in next Wednesday. <laughs> Subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit the notification button. I will say, if you guys would like to see me do this again, but make the crust by hand, Hit thumbs up and I will try my best because I don't think I've made pie crust since I was in high school. We're not going to disclose how long ago that was because that was a minute. The, the, you act like you don't know where things are in this kitchen. Yes, I'm pausing. Sure. You're still on camera. <laughs>